Okay, folks, so I keep a cheap shop here. Basically, I'm now just going to have this on paper. I'm also going to copy and paste this down into the comment section of my first video, or actually maybe all five. I'll just try to go over, I guess, again, what the methodology is now that I have a little more time and don't think I'm going to run out of time, etc., etc., etc. This is the contents of a text file. Now, if you're using, if you're more familiar with Windows, basically a text file is created by Notepad. You could also create text files with Word. You just have to save it as text. And what a text file is is just basically only text. Uh, usually, um, programs like Word will put <clears throat> hidden control characters inside the document to format the behavior of the document to get it to to have a certain look to it when it loads up. A text file is just the pure content is what you see. Okay. So I'm hoping I can actually get this clear. I think I do have it. Hopefully you'll get a good look at it. If you hit pause, you can actually see what I have here. And this camera is very sensitive, so if it's off by the smallest angle, what looks sharp at one point won't be sharp anymore. And of course, I got my viewer control in the way, so I don't even know if I'm getting this right at times. That looks to be pretty good in sharpness. I've also upped the resolution, but it means this file is going to be huge. Okay. Again, so to make a to make a script, all you got to do basically when you're making a script, what you're doing is you're automating commands. You would you would run from the command line, and would get is a basically is a command line tool. And to create this tool that will automate commands you would run from the command line, you have to uh, use a text editor, which in Ubuntu is under Applications, Accessories, Text Editor. And then what you do is you type in, at first start off with, in any situation when you're writing a, a script file, is uh, the pound key, exclamation point, and then the path to bash. It usually always is in bin bash, but if you wanted, if you happen to want to find out where it's located, there are any executables located that you have permission to actually use, you can type which, in this case bash, and which will find it for you and tells you it's a bin bash. Some people will put a bin sh at the top. It all depends on what environment you're running this thing from. Okay, so let's get back to here and get this thing out of the way so I can see what I'm picking up. And um, it's the angle of the right. <clears throat> okay, that just says this is the shell script. You know, so when it's run and this text file is set as executable, um, you don't don't use because it's a text file. If you're used to using Windows, don't label it .txt. Actually, you're going to label it .sh. Okay, and then even though it is consistent of only text, it doesn't mean it has to have a text extension. In fact, t extensions don't even really matter all that much in Linux. They, they do help in identification, but they don't set the um, whether if the program is going to execute or not. If there's an associate, there are associations, but um, it's not paramount. Okay, then what I do is I set my variables, and variables are things that you're going to want to um, that you know are going to change. You know, so when I'm downloading 500 pages from the SalemDeeds.com and they each have a different page number and maybe there's more than one book if I if if that is gonna if everything else is gonna remain the same but that's gonna change over time I'm gonna set that as a variable so that way I am able to uh, program uh, the script to change for the condition that changes and compensate for it and accomplish what I want um, this while loop uh, accomplishes the same things if I were just to merely uh, type would get HTTP and that Salem Deeds line there <clears throat> and put instead of dollar book I had a, um, a one there and instead of page God, it's so fuzzy instead of page I had a um, you know the actual page number and I made you know 
750 lines of this. I copied and pasted 750 lines, and I, I, I left the, the, I didn't have a dollar book there, and I had a one, and I manually changed the page numbers uh, from uh, one to 750, making sure I had four digits in front of the dot tip. That, these three wild lines accomplish the same thing, and so it saves you some time. Okay, uh, so anyway, I'm saying the while. The while loop says that until such time as a condition is, is fulfilled, um, do the following. And uh, do the following routine, and the following routine is enclosed in a do and done statement. And my routine is basically add a one to the variable page, and, uh, and then we get go ahead and download using the will get tool uh, the file from book number one I've set the variable for book as one it doesn't change I don't have it adding um, so I can see where it says page equals uh, back backslash which is this backslash over there uh, uh, expression dollar page plus one that's where I'm adding to zero at first to start with uh, to make it one and so when it goes over here to where it's got zero 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 dollar page tiff it actually uh, at the first count of the loop it'll be uh, historic zero 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 one slash zero 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 one dot tif and that'll end up downloading the page that I want and then when it gets to nine that while loop will stop and then the next while loop will start setting the page one variable at nine and then up until page 99 and the reason why I did that is because the files over there at Salem Deeds always are four are four digits dot tiff and so I needed to compensate for the fact that 99 and 10 all those numbers in between take two digits and not one then I put that in there, and I didn't want to do it fancy, I just, it's a little more straightforward. There might be a better way to do this, but this is the way I did it. And then um, when it gets to 100, after it downloads 100, it restarts at page 100 and downloads the rest. And the same principle applies to my uh, printing deeds um, file that's here. Now if I Probably the brightness on too high. It's the brightness is good for um, to look into text and maybe maybe this, but not for not for my face, my ugly face. Okay, so I can see this. I want to see what I'm capturing actually. It doesn't look too hot. Okay, so this is my printing thing. I'm using the same kind of condition. I've commented these last two areas out. Set the page variable to zero. And I've only set to do the first five pages, to print the first five pages. I've had to change directories to the location where I have the, uh, the files downloaded. I've ran the first script, this one, from the Salem Deeds book one directory in my home directory. That's home James Salem Deeds book one. I'm not making any assumptions here as to where I am in the system. That way I'll be certain to print these out. I first made the mistake of having just that there, and of course I don't have a, a root Salem D's directory, I have one in my home directory. And then um, this LP minus D command says, hey, print this thing to the printer that happens to have the descriptor LP, which is up, um, actually, <laughs> show you where it is here. There it is, represented with that. File print, I have two choices. I could change the variable to Gestetner DSM 622 and probably a lot faster result because my comic is slow. And then I've decided to scale my printouts to 75% of the original because I, just by experience or my recollection is that when I printed it out before, it, the, uh, the size of the print job was bigger than the page and so it didn't come out right, so I scaled to 75%. And then this page will start at 0001.tif those are located in my home directory. Go to my place at home folder, same deeds, book one. There is my 001.tiff file. Two, three, four, five. Now, this, I have a really slow Konica printer here. I'm going to go check to see if it's come out yet or not. 
Maybe I can point this there. I see something useful. I doubt. I doubt. So here is my first page that is printed out. There it is. Got it. Good. Okay. You saw that I had the TIFF file too. And the only reason why you want to print this stuff out is if you're if you're more comfortable with shuffling through pages rather than print files. And obviously, with 700 pages, not everybody is going to be able to afford or have the printing capacity to print out 750 pages of stuff. So. Um, That's the situation there. Now I'm, I'll look into seeing if I could find any um, tools to get. Um, now there's something else you can do actually. I just thought of. When you create a print job, you can also print your files out to PostScript. What does that do for you? Well, not much unless you know you can have you can end up with these all being on one PDF file eventually. Um, I'm not sure how to combine. I did a post on how to combine PDF files, but you know, if it's 750 pages long, I had it where I was editing <laughs> the PostScript file with Emacs, and so you know, after you add page number 100 to your file you know you have to scroll down an awful long ways just to put your little line in there to indicate you're doing the next page so I, I'm not too sure about that um, basically that's it so if you have a big thing to look through or maybe just print the index or maybe just look it over whatever you're more comfortable with I guess I'll just stop here because I'm rambling I don't have anything more to add